Hey folks, Phil Zito here, and welcome to day 10 of the BAS Bootcamp. In today's video, we are going to be continuing our look at control modes. So yesterday, we went through the digital on-off control mode, we went through the sequenced control mode, and we went through the floating control mode. Today's probably going to be a shorter video, because all we're going to be doing is looking at the PID loop. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with what a PID loop is, it's one of the most common control modes that is used in building automation. So what a PID loop does is it looks at a process variable or controlled variable or input. The term is different based on manufacturer, but it's basically the input that you are trying to control. So in this loop, we can see we have zone temp, we can see we have zone temp set point, a PID loop, and a damper command. Now while this isn't actually how we would code it out in the field, uh, this represents this three point approach to PID loops, which is you have a process variable or input, you have some sort of setting that you're trying to drive that process variable or input to, and you drive it through an output. So this whole thing is a closed, well, in most cases, it's a closed process loop, meaning that there's nothing outside of this loop that could interfere with it. Now, in some cases, there are other things like in spaces, you may have some form of reheat or something like that, that isn't accounted for in the loop. But in most cases, these loops will be closed. So what happens is when this loop detects essentially what is called error, which is the difference between set point and process variable, then the first thing that happens is you have a proportional response. So what you look at is the sensor span, essentially the controlled range of the sensor. So if this were zone temp, we would usually have anywhere from, well, it is zone temp. We would usually have anywhere from an eight to a 10 degree uh, sensor span, meaning that while the zone temp sensor can sense from like negative to 300 degrees, um, what we control to is typically we're controlling maybe 65, 75 is our controlled range. Our ideal is to have the zone temp at 72, but it could dip all the way down to 65 when the building's unoccupied and, or it could go up to 75. And so we have a 10 degree sensor span. And then our, th our actual range, our throttle range is zero to 100 for our output because we have a zero to 100% command. So when those two numbers come together, typically it's throttle range divided by sensor span. That gives us our proportional value. Now, this is different for everyone's software. Like if I were to go look at um, Distech software right here, they have a little bit different. They look at integral time. Um, Niagara looks at an integral constant. There's other software that looks at multiple values. I know Allerton, I know Train also look at multiple different values to calculate these things. The key point here is just understanding that while all these manufacturers may have different values for their PID loops, they all basically come down to the equation of output equals P plus I plus D. And the thing is, is that in most cases, we're not even using derivative. I'm not going to talk through derivative in this video. So when you're working with a PID loop, like I said, you have the input, you have the set point, you have the output, and then you have how it acts. Is it direct acting or reverse acting? Direct acting is when you go above set point, when the process variable goes above set point, you're going to increase the output. And reverse acting is when the process variable goes below set point, you're gonna increase the output. So you could naturally think that for cooling, um, things like cooling, things like uh, CO2 control, those would be direct acting. And for things like heating, things like pressure, those would be reverse acting loops. So when you look at this, you've got to determine your direct acting or reverse acting, you've got to determine your proportional constant, and you've got to determine your integral constant. Now these may be different names, but once you figure out those, 
then you're good to go. So we talked about proportional. We talked about error. We talked about direct acting. Now there's this I thing, right? So in theory, you could just have proportional response and you would get some controllability from it. Uh, the problem is, is that it's going to proportionally respond to the error and you can get situations where it's just not very responsive. It, you know, the, as the error increases, it will eventually drive the PID loop to 100% when it gets to the top of that sensor span. The problem with that is, okay, we, we've got this sensor span and controllability, but it's going to be very slow. And so this thing called integral comes in. And integral basically is a time factor. And what that integral value looks at is how long has there been this error. And the longer there's this error, and you can see, like I'll zoom in a little bit here, you could see that this PID loop is slowly ticking down. I've got a very slow acting loop with a setting at 0.25. And you'll see, I hate that it zooms out every time, but you'll see that integral is causing this to tick down because the error, right, is remaining the same. So if I actually went and commanded this to 70, you would see that it instantly drops, right? You see that instant drop by 10%. And if I, once again, command it down to 69, you're going to see that drop another 10%. That's your proportional. And you see that it starts ticking down faster and faster. And that's because your integral does two things. One, it is I times error. And that's the initial integral value. So you see that's why it's ticking down. But as it, it starts to tick down faster and faster, the longer we have this error, because I actually accumulates each time this loop cycles, each time this loop runs, I is actually going to accumulate more. And so what's happening is our proportional stays the same because it's proportional band times error, but our integral times error is going to accumulate each time the loop cycles. And we can see that the loop cycles every half a second. And so if we wanted to make that faster, we could do so by going and actually changing our loop cycle time. But what we're seeing, right, is it's just ticking down and faster and faster. And if I go here again and I set it to 68, we're going to see once again that 10 percent drop because of our sensor span or our proportional band. But we're going to see I start getting really fast, right? It's ticking down pretty quick now. And so this is what you want to have happen. You want your proportional band to respond accordingly. That's going to initially load the output of your PID loop. And then you want your integral to start building up over time the longer you have this error. So that should help you, my friends, with proportional PID loops, how you set them up, how they work. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out in the comments below the video. Thanks a ton for watching and have a great day.